What is going on YouTube? So coming back today with my first college football video in a little while. And I believe it's my first one since my college football previews ended. And that's my top five Heisman sleeper candidates for 2016. Now, these aren't just like sleeper candidates like, you know, some people are saying like, uh, if I could think of a level, you know, like Jalen Hurd, Mason Rudolph. Uh, I wouldn't say Baker Mayfield. He's not really a, much of a sleeper at this point. Like, you know, like Samaj P. Ryan. Um, you get the point of what I'm saying. I'm not saying like sleeper candidates like they're outside of the top 10. I'm talking sleeper candidates like they're not really talked about at all. Most of these players, if you're like a really big college football fan, you probably heard of because they've been mentioned somewhere. But again, these are pretty deep sleepers. Like you're not really going to find them on any odds list unless you look like really, really deep. Or, like I said, you got to have a really deep Heisman odds list. So let's start with the first one. And I've got Mississippi State quarterback Nick Fitzgerald. Now, the biggest thing for Nick Fitzgerald is going to be his team getting out of his way. Because Mississippi State relied so heavily on Dak Prescott, and he's gone. You know, Dak Prescott, People, I feel like people knew he was going to be good, but like not to that level. Definitely one of the greatest players in Mississippi State history, no doubt, or no doubt about that. I'm not saying Nick Fitzgerald is going to jump in and be Dak Prescott because to some degree that's probably what he's going to have to do to be able to win the Heisman. But if he can lead Mississippi State to like a nine-win season, you know, he's got the – you know, most Heisman winners that are quarterbacks have like one main receiver that they um, are able to hook up with. And, you know, he's got Fred Ross, one of the better receivers, especially in the SEC West. Now, if he can lead his team to a nine-win season when he's expected to probably – when Mississippi State's expected to be like a five-win team this year with how much they've lost – that probably goes on Nick Fitzgerald's shoulders. So, again, name to watch out for. Next one. Uh, Texas fans probably hate me, and you're going to think I'm condescending for saying this, but Shane Bouchelle, the quarterback, or the true freshman quarterback out of Texas. Now, I said Texas was going to go 4-8 in my college football previews, and that pissed every single Texas fan in their right minds off. I didn't even try to, just I think they're going to disappoint if I could, like, deep down in my heart. But again, that's just my prediction. Now, the thing with Shane Bouchelle and the thing with his potential is if this dude like leads Texas to like a nine or ten win season this year, that he's the savior of Texas football, most likely. If he throw, you know, like I said, if he leads them to a nine or ten win season where most quarterbacks lead a big program to a nine and ten or not or nine or ten win season, you know, with say at least 2,500 yards passing and 30 touchdowns, that immediately puts Shane Bouchelle in the Heisman running. He's going to, obviously, he's going to get nothing, like, nothing short of a lot of exposure when I mean, you're in Texas. And then, you know, they install a new offense. Like, don't get me wrong, the offensive system was broken last year. There's no doubt about that. But Sterling Gilbert comes in, a you know, proven pretty good offensive coordinator at uh, Tulsa. See if they can install a new offensive system. We'll be a little bit more passer-friendly. And, you know, it might open up this offense. Again, the receivers are going to have to be big. That's no doubt about that this year. Next one is probably the only one you've ever seen on a sleeper list out of all these guys. I don't know. Again, depends on what sleeper list you were looking at. Um, and that's Kenny Hill at TCU. Again, most of you guys have definitely heard of him, I'm assuming. I mean, coming over from Texas A&M. Sir off the 2014 season red hot by beating South Carolina. I remember that game. Um you know, then after a while, just Texas A&M season started going south, got benched. Uh, Kyle Allen came in. I believe he took over the starting quarterback for the, pretty much the rest of the season. Kenny Hill transferred out. And here he is. Job is his at TCU. Now, you saw what Doug Meacham was able to do with Teron Boykin. Obviously, it was co-offensive coordinators with Doug Meacham's. I'd say he's the, has a bigger hand in it. Now, you saw what he was able to do with Teron Boykin, just what both offensive coordinators were able to do. Teron Boykin went from, in 2013, a, a damn near a wide receiver, like, just because he was so bad. He, he was very, very bad at quarterback, like, just anything that had to do with throwing the ball. Next year, he's a Heisman contender, and the year after that, he was actually the Heisman favorite heading into the season in 2015 uh, for a few of the lists, for a few of the odds. And he was spectacular throughout the last, like, two years, barring a little bit of health issues last year. Kenny Hill, you know, he's shown the potential before. TCU still has a lot of, or a lot of talented players on offense. Kevontae Turf and Deontay Gray are both going to be very, very good this year. Just see if, you know, what type of Kenny Hill you get. 
Next one, Mitch Trubisky at University of North Carolina. I think he'll be a very big name throughout the season. He's got maybe a better set of offensive support right now than any other quarterback on this list. You know, I'm assuming, if, again, if you're a fan of any ACC team or UNC or any team related, then you know who Elijah Hood is. Uh, one of the more underrated running backs in the country. I'd say definitely a top, eh, yeah, I'd give him top 20 running backs in the country pretty easily. Um, you know, they got the receivers they need, Matt Collins, Ryan Switzer. You know, if Mitch Trubisky, now here's the thing with UNC, because to win a Heisman, obviously your team's got to be pretty damn good, like really good. And you got to be some part in that turnaround. I mean, it is the most valuable player. So what he's going to have to do, I think, is either just sweep through the ACC completely, which obviously is going to be no easy task, or just have one loss. Either way. They got it surpassed last year, which last year was the best year in recent memory for me for UNC. He replaces Marquise Williams, who was a good quarterback, but never really a Heisman contender or sleeper at some points. But, you know, Mitch Trubisky is definitely talented. If you go watch his film from when he's played, you know, he's done well. Then again, garbage time mainly. And then the last one is maybe the most common name besides Kenny Hill, and that's Ronald Jones at USC. So... Here's my thing with USC. I don't. Re I think that the player that's least reliant on their team here is Ronald Jones. I think that Jones has the cap. Like I said, Jones has the capability to be the best running back at USC since Reggie Bush, in my opinion. If you watch him, he's just like he's got that. He's got it, which kind of hurts me as an Oklahoma State fan because you know he committed to Oklahoma State at one point, but I didn't think he was going to stay committed from that first point that he committed. And probably just better at USC anyway. Our running game is terrible. So, back to the point, Ronald Jones, very fast, like, definitely, again, one of the top 20 fastest players in college football, in my opinion. This dude, like, if he runs for, like, 1,500 yards, and the problem, here's the biggest problem with the running back winning Heisman this year that's not, like, named Leonard Fournette or Christian McCaffrey. The amount of running backs you're competing with this year that are just unbelievable, this, the set of running back talent this year is the best I've seen ever, like, in my lifetime when I've been paying attention to college football that goes back maybe, I don't know, 15, eh, like, 13 years. And even when I was 8 years old, like, I remember some things, not all. You look through them two, if it's not one of them two, then, you know, move down to the next level. Dalvin Cook, Nick Chubb. If it's not one of them two, then, you know... Maybe Bo, Bo Scarborough, Royce Freeman. I know I'm I, I'm not meaning to put Scarborough in that echelon already, but you get what I you get my point. Ronald Jones is going to have to have a spectacular season, but again, I really believe he's got the talent to be a top ten running back in this country. It's just a name to watch out for. Again, these are just deep sleepers that no one's really talking about to this point. So that'll pretty much do it for this video. Like I said, this is more like a deep sleeper, like not deep deep sleeper. I'm not like. Like digging all the way deep, like to what would have been like our RG three level back in two thousand what two thousand eleven, yeah. Again, going back to Johnny Manziel, RG three. You know, your team doesn't have to be the great, like the best team in the country or even close to win the Heisman, but generally, yeah, you, you got to have some point in your team being better than it was before without your presence, or your presence is improved and it, the team's improved because of it. But anyway, that's five names to watch out for. I'll put the list of five in the description below. And then just obviously if you watch this point, then you just watch the descriptions all the way through. But that's pretty much it. So yeah.